All right, here we go, everybody. This is this is a lifetime. Music. I'm telling you. Hello? What kind of shit is this? What is what? <laughs> this is Redler from Hellcast Radio. How are you? How's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Is this Mike? Yes, this is me. Mike. Mike. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. I am Mike. <laughs> All right, Mike. Um, this is Mike from uh, This Is A Lifetime, our musical guest of the night. And, uh, hello, I, I'm, everybody. Yes, please say hello to uh, Hellcast Radio, everybody. And, hello uh, to the, the, the Hellcast landscape. Yes, indeed. All right, so uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, man. We, uh, we are in Spartanburg, South Carolina right now. We actually were supposed to have the day off, but we grabbed the show literally like three hours ago so now we're here nice so you're doing a and show right now you, um well i mean yeah we're we're not playing until like midnight we're playing dead last because we hopped on last minute but i mean it's a show it's better than having the day off hell yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's awesome all right so uh actually, first of all know, when, we, when we diy we diy all of our tours and stuff so it's actually not that uncommon like this is probably the third or fourth like last minute show and the three tours we've done where it's happened just like this. Nice. Okay. Um, is, uh, I, I'm actually typing in your uh, Facebook page right now. Uh, I think I got it right. There we go. All right, that is their Facebook page. You can also follow them on Twitter at This Is A Lifetime. Uh, so the first question I have for you guys is, what the fuck is up with that ringback music? Well, is that, what is it? It's like it's like some violin playing for us. Is it with the classical music? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the default ring back on my phone. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, I got I got to give this to you. This is this is this is mad props, you brother. Listen to this. Do you know what that is? What's what? That is the beautiful sound of a cold, crisp Coors Light cracking open. Oh, that's fantastic! It is, brother. Oh shit! I know I got two. I'm two. jealous. It's it's ten o'clock at night in South Carolina. It's still like eighty five degrees, and it's humid as all fuck out here. No, no, I I so totally agree with the humidity thing. It, it's I actually turned the fan off so n nobody would hear any d background distortion because I'm I'm in my bedroom yeah. right now, and you know it's like hot as fuck. I got three lights on, and my son's playing Xbox about three feet behind me. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, so I, I got to ask uh, next, for what, no, not what, how did you come up with the name This Is A Lifetime? Um, it's actually pretty dumb. The, uh, the band itself, the, the, the four guys that are in the band now, me, Morgan, Stevie, and Joe, we've only been a band for about eight or nine months, but the band itself has been around for like four and a half years now. And uh, I guess the way the name came about was um, the original incarnation of the band used to practice in like an old warehouse, like random auto parts and shit were just everywhere. And one day when they first got started, they were just kind of fucking around the warehouse thinking about what should we call the band. And uh, our original drummer found like a carburetor or something, and there was a sticker on the side of it that said, this is a lifetime guarantee. And I was just like, why don't we just call it this is a lifetime? And the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> hey, you know what? Everybody has a, a unique story, and uh, whether it's uh, you know uh, spectacular or whether it's you know something mundane, you know, everybody has a story to how they became about. And uh, I yeah. always—that's always the first question I ask because you know every every name is unique, and you know you never know how it came about. It's like you know people ask me how did I come up with Redler? Well. You know, it's something I just used <laughs> as a kid. You know, yeah, I was yeah. like, I, I actually played Dungeons and Dragons, and I was like, hey, this is a cool name. Let's try this, and I just fucking ran with it. Well, so you know, so uh, nice. But uh, so you guys have only been together some months. Um. Yeah. Like I said, the band itself started in 2010, 
Um, but yeah, uh, Stevie, Joe, Morgan, and myself have been doing this together since late December, early January. Um, I joined the band in July of 2012, I think. Okay. Um, maybe 2011. Can't even. But uh, yeah, we uh, the, the the sound that we've you know refined. We've been through a lot of different kind of subgenres. When uh, when this is the last time forming 2010, they were actually a pop punk band, and then just got progressively heavier as new members joined, and you know new inspirations came out, and you know. But we're happy with the uh, the sound that we have now, you know, more of a metal metal core kind of kind of vibe, and we're all happy with you know the way that the songs are being written, all the new stuff that's coming out. The Warrior EP is the first iteration of you know the four of us writing an entire you know recording together, and you know this is what people could probably expect from us in the future. Excellent, you know, I, and I took a I took a listen to it. And uh, I, I think it's good, and uh, that's why I'm having you here. You know, if I think something's good, I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna have you guys on as quickly as possible, so I can promote it because I'm all about the little people. You know, because I'm a little well, not physically a little person, but you know, I, in the big aspect of it all, I'm a I'm a little person, and. You know, but I have a loyal following, and I love to spread the word about something I think is good. And I do think you guys are good, so it, it's about getting well, you, you guys out there. I appreciate that. And, yeah, uh, and yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, when you're when you're a small fish in a big pond like we both are, it's, you know, communication and just getting your name out is the most important thing you can do. Pound on the pavement, just getting people to know who you are and what you're about, I think, is the best way to just, you know, they can form their own opinions about you, but as long as you're in their head, that's what matters. Exactly. It, you know, if you can get that in there, it means a world of difference. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Uh, does anybody have any questions for these guys? Uh, and, by the way, Mike, are you the only one here, or is everybody else around, too? Um, Right now, it's just me. Um, everybody else is in the venue, kind of, you know, hanging out, doing their thing, uh, you know, meeting people, making connections, all that good stuff. Because that's, like, that's what we like to do. You know, we're not the band that shows up and hangs out in the fucking van all night and doesn't talk to anybody and then sets their stuff up and plays and goes home. Like, that's so many bands I see, like big bands, popular bands that have hundreds of people in the venue that want to hang out with them and want to talk to them want to tell them, you know, what their music means to them and they don't get the opportunity because people are just so fucking jaded now. But like we like to make it a point of like, you know, come talk to us. We're not gonna we're not gonna, you know, push you away. We wanna hang out with you. We wanna hear, you know, how you came to know about us, how, why you like us, what you like about us. And exactly. that's you know I the the the, 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 the main mission statement I guess for us would be that we you know, we believe that the, the, the most solid fans that you could possibly get are ones that you can have that are personally invested in your success. People that like you as, as people and as artists, not so much just a band, you know what I mean? If they know you and they like you, it's, it's, they'll go out of their way more to promote you and to talk good about you to other people and share what you do with other people that they know that don't necessarily know who we are. Exactly. No, that, that is... Now, um, have you, or what was your inspiration for the type of music you guys are playing? Um, I, I've always been a fan of metalcore. I'm the oldest one in the band. I'm 29. Um, and then like the whole like I've I've been in metal for a long time, but the whole like the 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 hardcore and metalcore surge and like. 04, I would say, like 03, 04, when, you know, bands like Kill Switch, Engage, and Unearth, and All That Remains and Bleeding Through came out and started to get really big, and, you know, to me, Unearth is the quintessential metalcore band. They, I think, do it better than anybody else, and that was, that was the stuff that really got to me, that formed me, like, as a guitar player and a songwriter. Like those are the kind of riffs that I always loved, and those are the ones that I wanted to model my playing after. And I think a lot of that comes out, you know, when I first joined, we were still, you know, when I joined this West, and we were still kind of bridging the gap between pop punk and like melodic hardcore and whatever we were doing. So I wasn't able to really flex my metalcore muscles like I normally would. But okay. like on this recording, 
we get to start from the ground up. And it was just like, we can do, you know, we're not going for a particular sound. We're just going to, whatever comes out is what we're going to have as the finished product. And, uh, you know, we're all pretty much, the four of us in the band are metal oriented. You know, we okay. have, we're all pretty eclectic as far as what we listen to, but as far as writing and what we like to perform live, we're all metal guys. So the, the, the Warrior AP was way more of a metal type album versus the other stuff that we've done in the past. Okay. There's a question from the chat room. It's from Daz. She wants to know if any of you guys are single. Um, actually, yeah, everybody but me. Everybody but you. So the guy I'm talking yeah, to is single. hooked up. Yes, I, I have a lady. You have I a lady. Seen in like three weeks. Oh yeah. Okay, that's, that's that's cool. No, that's cool. I I mean I can only imagine the difficulties that you face being a couple and being away for that period of time. Yeah, it's cool though. She uh, she uh, the good news is she she knows what she was getting into when she when she got with me, so she already understands. But the other well, three guys are uh, single and ready to mingle. Excellent. So now it, you know. Hit them up on their individual Facebooks or Instagrams or whatever. I'm sure they'll talk to you. Excellent. See, and Daz is all about that because you know she she's got a kid that's you know almost uh, five months old now. So she you know she popped one out, so she's ready to you know see about getting another one. Ready to get back in the game. I feel it. it exactly. Exactly. All right. So uh, now you said you have an EP out. Now do you are you guys getting ready to get back into the studio or are you just touring right now? Um, right now, we uh, we released the the Warrior EP on July 25th. Um, this tour that we've been on it started on August 1st, and it goes through until tomorrow. Our last show is in Knoxville, Tennessee, tomorrow at the Long Branch. If anybody in uh, the Knoxville area is listening right now, come and hang out with us tomorrow. But uh, we go back uh, tomorrow night. We'll leave from Tennessee back home. Um, we have a couple of you know we do pretty well around the Cleveland area. We have a show on the 24th, and then a couple little things after that. But uh, we uh, are in conversations with uh, a label. It's nothing's official yet, so I won't get too deep into it. But uh, we want to definitely start writing. We try to never really stop writing. I mean, we're on tour, so it's really hard to do that now. But when we're home, we kind of try to just keep the wheels moving as much as we can. So it's not like, holy shit, we have to, you know, we have to have eight tracks done in four months we have to do it right now so we uh should be writing pretty soon um hopefully we would like to have a full length probably i would say early spring late late winter early spring okay cool about 2015 all right lexi lexi wants to know what you guys are called and lexi they are this is a lifetime that is the name of their band and uh my woman Tiff, she wants to know how old are you guys? Uh, Stevie is twenty-two, Joe is twenty-four, uh, Morgan is twenty-seven, and I'm twenty-nine. All right, Daz just told me that uh, she thinks her panties are wet because you sound so cute. Me? Yeah. I'm not the cute one, but I appreciate the compliment anyway. Well, hey, you know it takes a big man to admit you're not the cute one. I'm definitely not the cute one. I'm the fucking dude. I'm I'm the metal one. I'm the one that just I don't I go to shows and some dudes look for trim. I'm just here to fucking party, man. Excellent. You know what? We do a lot of that here on my show. I mean, I know you guys don't have time to hang out tonight, but uh, man, I'm telling you, if you like to laugh and you like to play a lot of games, this is the place to be. That's all I'm saying. And I know you guys are doing you your do rocking thing. That. Well, I, I like to drink and get stupid, too, so, you know, it's a good time all the way around. Oh, we most definitely like to drink. We, we do like to party. We have, we have a bit of a reputation back home for being the party band. Nice. What's the, okay, you got to tell me, what's the craziest thing you guys have done, either before or after a show? Craziest thing we've done before or after a show? Yes. Um, well, I will say, um, last, was it two weekends ago? Uh, we played a show in like the Pittsburgh area, okay. and Stevie had Stevie had uh, a buddy who lived in like bumfuck middle of PA, and they were having a house party, and it was like, hey, you can come crash with us, come hang out. So we did. Got there immediately, just party level went up to ten. Um, 
and uh, a, a few of us, including our merch girl, ended up getting some some road beef that night. <laughs> it, was, it was very productive. It was a very productive night for this is a lifetime. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that's that's good shit. Um, <clears throat> so so you're all drinkers. Yes, we are all drinkers. That is a wonderful thing. That is a really what what's your yeah. beverage of choice, sir? Uh the uh the official beverage of this is a lifetime is definitely old crow whiskey. Old crow whiskey? It's by far not the greatest in the world, but it's cheap and it's effective. Wow. And uh okay, Lexi from the chat room, uh she says, "Damn, the lead singer's fucking hot." He is. He's a very pretty man. A ve- <laughs> <laughs> that takes a- Mike, I gotta say that takes huge balls to say that you know one of your friends is a very pretty man. Yes, I am comfortable. I have masculinity to recognize a pretty man. Stevie is a very pretty man. <laughs> oh, that's but, spectacular! I mean, he's the face of the band, he should be. You know, he's, he's no, you're he's right. All the tattoos and he's got the abs and everything. You should see my chat room right now. Everybody's talking about their age right now, and you know, co- comparing themselves to you guys and how young you are. And yeah, so, well, I mean, I'm the old man of the band, so. Twenty nine, dude. Right. You're still a baby, man. Uh, that's great, though. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of you. I, 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 it's great. It really is. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, hey, Joker. Yeah, Joker is my co-host, by the way, who has been very quiet so far. Joker, you got any questions for Mike? No, no, definitely not. Um, I still won the chat room. I'm not sure you asked him or not. If he's on iTunes or not, then he is. Can we know? And the, the, any the, um, albums on iTunes yet? Yes. Um, our uh, the Warrior EP is on pretty much anywhere you want to find it. We have a Bandcamp. Uh, it's Bandcamp. Dot this or this is a lifetime. Dot bandcamp. Dot com. You can stream the Warrior EP for free, or you can uh, download the whole thing for five bucks. I think um, both of our EPs, the Warrior EP and our Clarity EP that we released um, in January, are both available on iTunes. I think both of them are also on Amazon. Um, you can find both of them on Spotify. Um, and there's a bunch of we go through this company called, called TuneCore, and it's basically they they outsource your music digitally to a bunch of different places and you know they make money and you make money you know albeit not that much but I mean it's something Something's so yeah pretty much any it, it's it's not hard to find our two latest EPs on the internet that's for sure okay nice. Lexi in the chat room is asking another question she, first she asked if uh, Stevie was single and I said yes but then she also asked Stevie's very single are you guys have do you guys have any plans to go to England because that's where she's at I would love to go to England if we can find like I said we're in talks with the label it's uh, it's not you know nobody real big but it's somebody that can help us out pretty much worth the point we've been very DIY the whole time I've been in this band it's you know we up until this year we've recorded our own uh, albums and EPs booked our own shows done all that by ourselves and then it's pretty much you know the most efficient band can only go so far by themselves before you need some outside help and that's why we're starting to reach out to a label mostly just for tour support because I mean we uh, this is our third tour Um, we did one we did like a week in January a week and a half in April and then we've been out for about two weeks this time and it's all us you know it's usually just Stevie and Joe booking shows you know, making the contacts that we've made on the road, the other two tours, just trying to get in other places, and it's hard. Like the way the the way the industry works now, it's really hard for a band that no one's ever heard of. There's exactly. someone that don't want to take a chance on you, and it's like, you know, why am I going to pay you fifty dollars if I don't know the fuck you are? Like, what are you going to bring to the table? If you're from you know ten hours away, you're not going to bring anybody. But it's just really, it's been um, as far as you know. If there's anybody out there listening that isn't a band and is trying to go on tour and doesn't know how to get started, it's just, you know, we're still learning, but that's what's worked for us. You know, you just, you, you, you hit social media real hard, you go on Facebook, just check, you know, Google venues, promoters, find some guys that will take a chance on you, and just, all we've done is we show up, we're nice, we're on time, we're friendly, we talk to the promoters, we hang out with the other bands and the people that show up to watch the show, we give 100% on stage, and 
nine times out of ten before we leave they're asking when we want to come back but all right you know, all right there's a there's a few comments here in the chat room I got to mention. Uh, first, my woman Tiff says, uh, uh, "Damn, you guys are some fuckable men." Um, All right. So, yeah, that's good. And then Daz wants to know uh, the lead singer's number, and I told her to hit him up on Facebook. And then uh, sure Lexi. Hit him up on Facebook. And then Lexi, the one who's in uh, England, says that she has a king size bed and would be happy to have you guys over anytime. That's fantastic. Yeah, so so if you're ever in England, yeah. hit her up, and she'll have all four of you over there. I most definitely will. Make sure make sure she follows us on Twitter so we can keep in touch. Exactly, and to follow them on Twitter, it's at This Is A Lifetime. All right, yep. Mike. And for, our, and for our Instagram as well, at This Is A Lifetime. Excellent. All right, Mike, we're going to cut you loose so you can go do your thing tonight. It's been an honor and a privilege to have you on my show tonight. And I cannot Absolutely thank you enough. Absolutely, you as well, sir. It's been, it's been a very fun interview. Thank you. And uh, we're going to feature your song in my segment called King of the Hill, where you battle two other songs for supremacy. And uh, I will definitely awesome. let you know how that goes afterwards. And uh, Fantastic. But hey, you know what? If you guys are uh, bored, say, after you're done playing, and uh, there's a very good chance I'll still be awake and on air. So if you want, you can go ahead and uh, give this number a call back. <laughs> and, you know, we may have you on afterwards if you want. Hell yeah. All right. We, uh, we'll probably go on around midnight is what I've been told, but we'll see what happens. And that, well, I usually go till like, I don't know, anywhere between 2 and 5 a.m. So, you know, it all depends. Oh. All right. So I, it all depends. If I pass out sooner, you know, you know, obviously it's going to be a shorter show. But if I stay up later and I keep rocking on, you know, we could be up till very late. So feel free to call if you want, man. Sweet. All and right. have a have a spectacular night, my friend. Thank you very much. You have a great show too, man. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Take it easy. Later. All right. Bye. That. Bye. And there we go. All right, that was Mike from This Is A Lifetime.